of survival. It seems like every time there is a growth in consciousness of black America, they, corporations, of course, seem to uh, create uh, create some type of huge conflict to bury the progression of black America. You know, I, I took the trip. My whole views on us has completely changed. Uh, let, let me say not changed, but it, it's been upgraded since I came back from China. Traveling is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way of educating yourself. I recall reading a book uh, called Let My People Go by Albert Alatsuji. He was a writer out of South Africa. And they were, he was describing how they got their education of being tribes, tribal people. They didn't have colleges and universities. They would travel with caravans through Africa, all parts of Africa. And the more caravans you travel, the more you learn, the more you learn, the more you were able to, to help your people raise the consciousness of your people. And then he was telling the story of knowing what a rifle was. Um, it, it was a it was a beautiful book. It was called "Let My Let My People Go," and uh, by Albert Alafuji. Uh I read that book a hundred years ago, back in the early '60s, late '50s, when I was in the military. And uh, he was talking about certain things that I have done myself not trying to pattern, but just that it just happened that way. I've done some nice traveling. I've been to Africa. I've been to the Middle East. I've been to uh, lower, I guess you could call it lower Europe, meaning Spain, France, Greece, Italy. I've been all there. And, and I'm saying these were trips not related to the military. You know, I've been to Hawaii, but I was in the military when I was in Hawaii, and I, I, I faltered myself for not expanding my explorations, going to the other islands, going deeper into the mainland island of Hawaii. I stayed more near the coast. I always saw the water, the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, not knowing then what I know now. But now that I've traveled, I see the power of knowledge and the power of learning. And so what I've done now, where I am now, I'm beginning to put together uh, everything that I've experienced in life. I'm bringing it in and I'm molding it into one foundation rather than, you know, having it scattered over, you call me and ask me this, ask me that. Everything on this earth is res is revolved, hear me clear, every activity on this earth revolves around you and I. We are the primary suspects, or the, what they call unusual suspects. We are the primary suspects of every activity. Very heavy, strongly in United States. Every decision that goes on in the United States, it is directly related to Black America. Directly related. You need to start searching for the relationship, and maybe we can get out of some of these patterns that we in these these uh, slave type patterns that we have locked ourselves into, loving thy enemy. And, and trying to disguise ourselves as being the enemy, that type of thing. Maybe we, it will help us. But tonight, I'm going to deal a little bit about hypothecation. And I had always thought hypothecation was something different than what I'm learning it to be today. And uh, 
is related directly to our demise in America because we're trapped in America by a contract, a contract known as SISQVI Act of 1666. You need to write that down. SISQVI Act. 1666. You spell Siskiyou. C E S T U I. Sister. Q. Second word. Q U E. Third word. V I E. Siskiyou. Act of 1666. It, it's it's difficult to relate to it other than the fact that they have declared us to be dead, which brings on a whole new mindset. And that's what the problem has been with me. I have a physical self and I have a spiritual self. And as long as I stay physical, I can't really relate clearly to the spiritual self of, my, of myself. It may sound strange, but it's it's something that I'm I'm since I've been home from China, I've been wrestling with that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with it. You can believe that. The Cisco account is an act for redress of inconveniences by want of proof of the decease of persons beyond the seas or absent absenting themselves upon whose lives a state do depend. Now that really sounds like a, a lot of gobbledygook. But what they're talking about is that invisible straw man because the physical body has not died, but the straw man has died. And they have a legal way of proving that you have died because they use words during your birth as child and infant. Those are two different words. You come in and give birth to an infant, but you take home a child. I don't need to go into all of the, well, let me just say it this way. And this is clean and, and understandable. When a child is born, ladies know this, there's a baby and then there's an afterbirth. Now, yeah, there you go. The complete process is called boring a child. So you have a you have you you're pregnant and you have the baby. Okay. Well the infant is 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 labeled or titled the afterbirth, and the baby is titled child. So the language changes on the legal front on that part. part. They declare the infant dead. I know none of you ever even thought about once you have a child, what happened to the after, the, uh, the uh, what did I call it? The the afterbirth. There you go. The afterbirth. No, you, no one's ever even talk, thought about it. Where is it at? I want to take it home. Where is it at? You know, you never think about it. You don't even know what it, maybe you don't know what it looked like. I don't know. Because I ain't never been in there. But I'm just telling you. This is how it's set up. And that's very important to know. You ain't got to get into it other than to know that they declare the afterbirth, the infant, and then they declare the child or the baby the child. Now, life begins for that after birth because they declare it dead. Now, that's what brings on this account that they set up for that after birth. They name the after birth the same as the name of the baby. I don't know the difference. But they 
everybody listening knows the teacher stressed to you as a baby, uh, as a infant, first grader, that you spell your name with upper and lower caps, upper cap, lower, upper and lower caps. You didn't think much of it then, but they always told you that your upper and lower cap name is your is the noun of you, the natural person. Keep that in mind, natural person. The baby is the natural person. And the uh, after birth becomes the straw man. Now, everybody will tell you the straw man don't exist. They don't know anything about the straw man, so let's don't even get into that. But the infant is named the same as the baby. Okay? Now, the baby goes home with mama. She don't know nothing. She's gone. Ignorant. And that's the way they want to keep her. Just as dumb as they can. Because they got something to do with this part of the birth, that afterbirth. Now, they take that after after birth, label it, and through court action, a judge has to sign the paperwork, which makes it court action. Remember that those words, or you can call it action proceedings. Remember that. Now we're getting into legalese. Okay. So in order to explain this, the England during the 1600, immediately during and after the black so-called Black Plague, and that's another misnomer that need should be investigated. I don't want to do it, but that Black Plague could be nothing more than a story of creating this by Act in order to declare everyone in England and under the domain of England, the UK, declared everybody dead. It just dawns on me that that probably was not a black plague of source where they uh, everybody died and they were sick and 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 all of this. You know that you know they can make stuff up. But it, it it can describe, it's just like, let me stop for a minute, just like the great flood, 40 days and 40 nights. You know, that wasn't no water running and killing everybody and drowning everybody. That was a deluge. That's another word for flood. Deluge. And a deluge means overpowering knowledge and wisdom that sweeps across that you can't stop. See, when you have a flood, you can't stop it. If you got a busted pipe, you're in trouble. Everything in this path is going to get wet. It just sweeps over everything. So a deluge could be a new knowledge that's been put into the universe. And we're going through a new knowledge now that's going through the universe. And no one can deny it. No one can get away from it. That's why you see all so much ignorance on TV. Every day you turn it on, you got something stupid going on. We should be totally embarrassed that those bastards that call themselves presidential candidates on both sides represent us. How that piece of trash going to represent me? And they are no different than their predecessors. All that trash that come before them. Bush, Daddy Bush, Reagan, a, a movie star actor, never ran well yet. I think he ran for office. But anyway, movie star actor, peanut man out of Georgia. You probably could go on and on all the way back. Just a bunch of bums. They thought that, that a young Bush was the dumbest piece of trash that ever hit the White House. But they're going to beat that now with Obama because they're going to label him the dumbest that ever been there. So they have a way of labeling certain things. 
I said I was going to bring it. I still forgot to bring it. All right, I'm going to quit talking about it until I get it in here. Okay, so we're talking about killing the newborn, declaring everyone dead. And they call it the Black Plague. That, that, that tells you now. There, because the earth was black in the beginning, the Europeans began to get a toehold with the Roman wars and, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, 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 crusades and all that type of thing. And their purpose was to enslave black, um, black earth they headed straight for, for Africa. Don't that tell you something? So, an act for redress, to make right. The inconvenience, notice that word, inconvenience. That's not a determining word that is going to be bad forever. It's just a small inconvenience. You're in debt now because it's an inconvenience for you. Why? Because you're ignorant and don't know why you're in debt. Most of you have no idea how to get out of debt because you can't work your way out of debt. You can forget that. Because when it comes to hypothecation, all you're doing is one of the reasons the hypothecation works is because you've been paying debt with a debt. So how the hell are you going to get out of debt? The Federal Reserve note is nothing more than a debt. And you work your butt off one job, two jobs. Your wife worked one job, two jobs. Your children work one job, two jobs. You never own anything. You come in the world in debt and you go out of the world in debt because you're ignorant to what they're doing to you and me and us. When you see those movies of King Arthur and and uh, the uh, the Lionheart and the Paint, all those movies, those were the cha- that those were the, the the void that was set up, just like now in in uh, um, the ISIS. ISIS is nothing more than angry people who are going into a void. Who created the void? Ignorant Europeans, known as Bush, Reagan, Reagan started it, Bush, Daddy Bush, Junior Bush, Clinton, uh, Carter, all of them. They created a void in Iraq, in the Middle East. Notice you never heard them talk lately about OPEC. Where is OPEC? They done destroyed the whole concept of OPEC. Unbelievable. You look at it, you see it, you don't know it because you're not looking in the right place. But they create a void. So there has to be something that's going to start. You just can't stand there. If you're going to kill the President of the United States and all of the cabinet, are you just going to stand there and wait for something, some organizer to come to reorganize you, to have uh, peace? And, and and prosperity and health, good health and all the things that a constitution can give you? No. Everybody's going to try and start it. Some of them are going to be good. Some are going to be bad. So you're going to start fighting. It's simple. They know this. That's why they call anything that opposes the United States and, and, and their allies they are known as terrorists. They're known as terrorists because they are snowballing you as to what really is going on. And I know and you know if if if, if the police departments are killing off everybody like that more than they're doing now, you're going to be so angry, you're going to do everything you can to get back at them. And once they see that they got a problem on their hand, they're going to call everybody terrorists. That's all they can do. They, and then they'll say they don't know why uh, those people are angry, black people are angry. They don't know why the prisons are loaded with black folks. 80% of all prisons in America are black. They fool you by calling them they're all crooks, they're all uh, 
They like to steal and they like to rape white women and all that kind of stuff. You never look at the real cause because you're not taught to look at the real cause. You take too much for granted. So we're dealing with the Siskiyou Vi Act of 1666. Okay? The recital that Siskiyou Vi have, have gone beyond sea and that revisioners cannot find out whether they are alive or dead. Okay? Now, what does that mean? That means that that afterbirth has to be declared dead because it's not moving. It, it, it ain't breathing. It was breathing just when it separated. I don't know that much about it, so don't call up here and try to check me. I don't know. Don't want to know. But I know there's a part of that baby that don't go home. And that's the part I'm talking about. I've always called it afterbirth. You can call it what you want. Somebody call it a preset or a pre something. I don't know. I don't know. How you pronounce it? Persena. Okay. I'm going to still call it afterbirth. I don't know no better. All right? Some people say it was a breathing when they put it on the, on the, on the, when they did it. I don't know. But the bottom line is, that's what they use to create money in the United States. And now it's all over the world. That's what they've been spreading. They cannot figure out if that's their life because you don't know. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Probably the first time you heard it. But the law has to have a remedy because they know that they, they Europeans, they know they're on ball time. They understand the nature and the laws of nature. You can't hold people in bondage forever. Murdering and killing is not going to get you anywhere because eventually you're going to be destroyed. So the name of the game is to always have a remedy. But trichology says you got a remedy, but don't tell them where it's at. We, Moors in America, have been struggling trying to find the remedy. That's why I always say we don't know everything. That's why I tell people, I take everybody's information, put it in this big noggin, this big old mick noggin I got, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I, I, I settle it out and try to figure out what's good for my soul and my spirit, and then I move with that. And that's what makes power, because when I make a move or when I talk, I'm talking from my spirit of all things. Makes sense to you. Okay. So they know what they've done. You don't know. But they can't take a chance that you're going to find out and come back and do damage to them. All of them in the uh, White House, all of them in that District of Columbia, they're all crooks. I don't care if your mom is there. They crooks, and if she's there and don't know it, she's worse than a crook because she's being used by the crooks. That's why you hear strange conversations going on now. You hear that uh, the uh, that damn uh, uh, Trump running his crap. Now you got two other ones coming up. How do they find the talk like they talk? How do they? Narrowly get close to issues and don't really say what they talk. They coming from a different base. That's why they know the United States was founded for white males. They know that. You don't know it and don't want to know it, or better yet, you refuse to know it. Oh, I don't believe that. Oh, shut up. You've been suffering all your life. Somebody bring you something new. You gonna say you don't believe it? Go search it out first. Then come back and say you don't believe it. And prove it. Bring some proof. There you go. Okay. So, the Siskiyou account have gone beyond the sea. And that the revisioners 
cannot find out whether you are alive or dead. The law says, here's the law of, of the of uh, Siskiyou account, the returning of an estate to the grantors, the original owners, or the grantors' heirs after the interest granted expires. So they know whatever they've done with that afterbirth Because the afterbirth is super rich, y'all. The afterbirth is worth in time. I under, I was told last uh, this weekend, I went to a seminar, that not only does the government put a million dollars on the birth certificate and create what is known as a secured instrument for Wall Street, I was told that every year they put a million dollars on it. Every year, they put another million dollars on everybody. So by the time you reach the age of major of the majority, you're worth a good, an age of majority by European law is 18, the age of majority. But if you don't declare yourself alive at 18, you're still dead. Let me say it another way, turn it around. You can only declare yourself alive when you reach the age of 18 because you are a minor, a ward of the state that you live in until you become 18. If you don't do the proper process at 18, you will remain a minor. That's why they call black people minors, minority. You are of the minority. That's why when they were saying, when they were trying to get a white mayor in here doing the that that trick, <laughs> be cool, Ron. When they had Dennis Archer as mayor, the Detroit was 75% black, and they were calling Detroit blacks the minorities. Everybody got upset with that because you thought you were coming from the quantitative, I guess it would be the quantitative mathematical portion of majority and minority, half or uh, three-fourths and all that kind of stuff. They ain't talking about that. When you declare yourself the age of the majority, can declare that at any time. I just declared my age of authority. I'm 74 years old. I just declared in January. <laughs> I've been a minor for 74 years, which means I've been dead for 74 years. Hello? Wake up out there. Listen to me. What do you call them? The city. Got some jokes in the in the back room back there, cracking on me. Okay, so the law of the Siskiyou account. And listen carefully: the returning of an estate to the grantor, the natural person, or the grantor's heirs, his children, his wife, after the interest granted expires. So they're going to take the interest to get where they're going, meaning if you if you flip it at 18, they had to do certain things, so they're going to get paid for that all the way up to 18 years when you can declare yourself if you know what you're doing. That, that was A. Here's B. An estate which so returns state with the after birth. And they use it all the time. That's why the United States is the most powerful nation on earth, because they got nothing but slaves here. Everything you do, you're a slave. I don't care what color you are. But it's all geared to black America, 
whites are just dumb. They don't know. So what they do with whites, they give them more privileges than they give blacks, which the whites think they're better, and they don't want to listen to truth. But you got some out there that are waking up and realizing that they are nothing but slaves. I was listening to a group of uh, Europeans out of uh, uh, New Hampshire. I think it's one of the sites coming up for, for the primary elections. One of the cats said, <laughs> he said, two things. Number one, why would I want to turn my gun in to let them protect me when a couple of years ago, a soldier on the base with all the guns killed about 15 soldiers right there on base. He was an officer, and they couldn't stop him. Another lady said, I'm voting for because I hate the politicians. That's my that's my strategy. I, I ain't voting, but I hope he I hope he wins. I don't care. But it's gonna be a favor to me because the politicians ain't worth a damn anyway. That's worse than lesser of two evils, Trump or o Obama. You ain't got nothing with Obama? Trump's talking about doing something. Now, we know he can't do it, but I'm just telling you. A lot of people don't know that he can't do it. When he make all them old dumbass statements, if I say, yeah, I'm going to vote for him because he's going to put a wall up. Or he's going to uh, put all the Arabs out of the country. Or he's going to stop the old, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. The only thing that protects you is that Constitution, and you don't even want to read the Constitution to find out what rights you have. You're going to listen to somebody else tell you what the Constitution said rather than you study it yourself. Because they all lie. They all live good and they lie. The more they lie, the better they live. That's jack leg ass preachers. You know, I hate them. That's entertainers. That's bougie, bougie Negroes, bourgeoisie, boulets, AKAs, all of that. All those secret orders. They're only there to keep you in check. They're gatekeepers. It's a good word for them. Gatekeepers. They're griffins. Look that up. Okay, no, uh, num number B was at a state which soul returns. And number C, the right of succeeding to an estate. So the bottom line is you have a right to the afterbirth process or the account that they used. It's not the afterbirth, but it's the account that they gave the afterbirth, and they gave the afterbirth your name. Yes, they did. Now, they did all of that with, with a court order. They don't, they don't, they don't uh, broadcast that type of thing. They don't let all of that anything out. But in order to declare the, the afterbirth dead, they got to get a signature. Now, where they put it and where it goes, I have no idea. But it took a legal process to do it. So when you declare yourself free, you got to set up a legal process to make yourself free. Now, this this article, and you need to get this article and read it, Siskiyou Vi Act of 1666. It's chapter 11, chapter 18, and chapter 19. And then it says chapter 2. So I got 12 pages of it. All right. Now, the Siskiyou account given by statute law, it was revised in 1948. Preamble omitted in part under authority of statute law, Revision Act. They're, they're, they do a, they're doing a job with it. You probably never heard of Siskiyou. And they, they, different ways they pronounce it. Siskiyou Viac is one of them. Abbreviations, actions, 
in the original form of this act. Action. When you hear the word actions in a document, they're talking about court. Abbreviation of the action in the original form of this act have been expanded into modern lettering in the text set out above and below. So now they say Siskiyou account remaining beyond the sea for seven years together and no proof of their lives. Judge in action to direct a verdict as though Siskiyou Vi were dead. So they, they changed the law and said that, that if no one comes and claims the the uh 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 uh, uh say it now. afterbirth, there you go, afterbirth. For seven years it becomes legally dead. Legally dead. Now that's how they revised it. But we know from the original, they have to give it up when that when that uh, uh, afterbirth rises, when it comes alive. How does it come alive? How do you get a court order to prove that you are alive? I wish I had a class. I'd ask the class. What can you do to prove that you are alive? We're going to get to that. So don't don't go nowhere. We're going to get to that. But they say the judge in action to direct a verdict as though Sescuvi were dead. If such person or persons for whose life or lives such a state has been or shall have granted or aforesaid shall remain beyond the seas, or elsewhere absent themselves in the realm by the space of seven years together and not, no sufficient or evident proof be made in the lives of such persons or person respectively in any action, hear that word again, commenced for recovery of such tenements by the lesser or revisionists, revisioners, in every each case, the person or persons upon whose life or lives shall lives such a state depended shall be accounted as naturally dead. And it and in every action brought for the recovery of the said tenements by the lesser or revisioners. There and are their heirs are are assigns. Wow, the judges before whom such action shall be brought shall direct the jury to give their verdict as if the person so remaining beyond the sea or elsewhere absentee himself were dead. That's a lot of gobbledygook. That's why I went through it fast. I can't read anyway. But all they're saying is there was a court action declared after seven years to legally declare Ron March dead, which gave them a right to do whatever they want to do. Now, meanwhile, on the physical plane of Ron March, I was born into a system known as United States of America that has a constitution of the people, not for the people, of the people, and that of are the crooks. There's your difference. The original constitution was for the people. Since you account and, and, and the, the birth of the United States of America, which was 17, excuse me, 1871, they created a constitution of United States. Nobody, nobody caught it. Nobody checked them. Most people say, "Oh, you know, the difference than that." Oh, yes, it is. Oh, for United States, make you the predator. 
of the United States make you a debtor. Now tell me it don't make a difference. Because of the United States are those that are in power. That's why they came up with democracy. And and democracy, the definition that that's that's liable and good is mob rule. Police department, judges, army, air force, military, military complex, power. He who carries a big stick wins. Y'all better wake up. If the supposed dead man proves to be alive, then the title is revested. Hello? The, 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 the Act by Statute Revision Act of 1863 says, if the supposed dead man proof or proves to be alive, then the title is revested, revested. Action for mean profit with interest. Action for mean profit with interest. So that means law, court, for mean profit. That means that you now can go to court and get all your stuff. Every one of you out there can go to court. But there's a process now because you got to know how to declare yourself alive. What does that mean? Provided always that if any person all persons shall be evicted out of any lands or tenements by the virtue of this act. And afterwards, if such person or persons upon whose life or lives such estate or estates depend shall return again from beyond the seas or shall be proof or shall on proof in any action is that word again, to be brought for recovery of the same, be made appear to be living or to have been living at the time of the eviction, then that then and from thenceforth the tenement or leasee, you, who was outed of the same his or her or his or their ex look at these words can't kick them out fast enough executors administrators or assigns shall or may re-enter repossession have hold and enjoy the set the said lands or tenements in in his or her former estate for and during the life or lives or long term as the said person or persons upon whose life or lives in the same estate or state depend shall be living. Well, that's a whole lot of gobbledygook, but y'all heard what I said. And also shall upon action or actions to be brought by him or them against the the leasers, revisionists, or tenants in possession or other persons respectfully, which since the time of the said eviction received the profits of their said lands or tenements recovered for damages for the full profits of the said lancers. We mean the lancers, the people that got the land. Tenements respectfully with lawful interest for and from the time that he or they were outed of the of their lands and tenements and kept or held out of the same by the leasers, uh, revisioners, tenants, or other persons, Lord have mercy, who after the said eviction received the profits 
of the said lands or tenements or any of them respectfully as well in the case when the said person or persons upon whose life or lives such a state or states did depend or or shall be dead at the time or bringing the said action or actions as if the said person or persons were then living. Woo! You know what? If I had a class, I'd just ask one question. What the hell did I read? That's right. In other words, at birth, that transaction goes on. Mama comes in, bore a, a pregnant, bore a child, or, or delivers. There you go. She delivers a, a baby which has a afterbirth. They label the baby a child, and they label the afterbirth an infant. You remain an infant all your life until you come alive, take, until you take action and come alive, and then you are declared the age of majority, which means that everything that's happened to you in the physical life as a child and a young adult and an adult and a senior, they have to give it all to you. Give it back. Help me, somebody. <laughs> I got a caller. I want to just call it keeping up with this madness. <laughs> wait, wait one second. I'm gonna get you. I want to see if you if you know what's going on, going on. Uh, area code seven six three one one three seven. Do you have a question or comment to this crazy man going on on the deep end? <laughs> Are you out there? <laughs> What's yeah, happening, brother? I was go I was gonna tell you to quit reading and take a deep breath. That's all I was gonna tell you. <laughs> Woo! You lost well, you lost me somewhere. Yeah, you keep talking about after birth and before birth. You got the people scared to have to death. They, they already told us they're doing all kind of stuff with the afterbirth anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, if I if I say it without reading it, y'all going to call me a liar. They're going to say, what, Ron, where are you getting that madness from? So if I yeah, read through it, I think the majority yeah. of them got a, a, a glimpse of what I'm talking about. And I think you did too. Yep, yep. Because you know there's two of you, one with all caps and another one with all four caps. Am I right or wrong? Right. And the and and now as you study to be free, you you know that your Cisco account can be tapped through your afterbirth, or better yet, through your lawman. Does that make yeah, I sense? I got you. Yep. Right. Yep. So, you, I'm just. I just want you to take a deep breath, and so we can catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was having fun. Right? You know, I can't read. You know, See, you keep saying that, and then you do more reading, and then you keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, and then you keep reading. So we we understand yeah, that you have. That you have uh, difficulty with with words, but you have the ability to read. Well, let me put it this way: I'm doing the best I can with what I got to work with. Being a there high you school go. Dropout, that's all we, like, and that's all we we know that because after right. after you digest it, then you explain it. But I'm just saying, you know, you slow down a little bit and give us a chance to catch you. That's all. <laughs> Goodbye well, from Minnesota. All right, <laughs> all right, brother. <laughs> I found All right, good enough. Yep. I tell you what, I'm gonna do a little better than that. I'm gonna take a break, and we're gonna try to pick it up a little bit because I'm pushing for a hypothecation. And in order to hypothecate and deal with this, which is uh, legally known as, or better yet, they named it 
of the Federal Reserve Act. Hypothecation, another word, is the Federal Reserve Act. So once we understand that we're talking about the afterbirth, so let's label it now the, uh, the, um, whew, the estate. They, it, it turns into an estate because that's where they do all the finance, all the commerce is done with the afterbirth named in all caps, uh, illegus, same as yours. This is where it all starts. Now, if we take a project and we're going to talk about property because that's the main, the largest investment most people make in their lives is purchasing a home. And they get credit. They have to have credit because it's such a large purchase. But what they have to do is record it. Now, remember the word, record it. The act of making a record of it. So they have to take that afterbirth, once to make it into an estate, it has to be recorded somewhere. Normally, it's recorded on the state level with the state. And then from the recording on the state level, they make it a new one or they uh, create a new estate and they do that on the county level. So there's always two birth certificates, one on the state and one on the county. The state is the most important because it deals with the child, the child, which is the physical baby. The one on the county level deals more with the, the afterbirth. That's where the straw man originates. If you look at the date of the birth and the date of the issuance of the county birth certificate, it will be the same name and, and everything, up in Little Castle, of course, but it will be within three to five day difference because they had to do business on the state level and then they created the county level. The county level is very easy to get because they want everyone to assume that they're living in the county level of the afterbirth with the illegis, E-N-S, L-E-G-I-S, illegis. That's the way I pronounce it. And so they want you, to, that's, that's the, the name of the game. They want you to believe that all of this going on on the right is you. We're lit, we're better yet, let's change it around. On the left is you, and on the right, it's 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 the illegus or the or the all caps. So they have to record it. We're staying with the law because we're talking about action. So sometimes questions arise as to when the act of recording is complete. When is the act of recording complete? As in the following case, a deed of real estate was acknowledged before the register of deeds and handled to him to be recorded. And at that same incident, a creditor of the grantor, a creditor of the grantor, you are the grantor, flipping script. They're going to make you the debtor because you don't know any difference. You didn't declare it. You didn't come forward. So the creditor of the grantor attached to real estate. In this case, it was held the act of recording was incomplete without a certificate of the 
acknowledgement and wanting that the attaching creditor had the preference, the preference of the fact of an instrument being recorded is held to operate as a constructive notice upon all subsequent purchasers of any estate, legal or equitable, in the same prop in the same property. But what they're saying is, since the only names on the birth certificate is you and your mother, and I understand the mother's name. I haven't looked at it closely enough. Now I'm getting new information, but the mother's name is in is in. Um, uh, her maiden name. But, but it's important to know that the birth certificate is of you, of your birth. So they're really using the birth certificate and attaching it to the afterbirth. And then they're going to give the real baby the county birth certificate, which is the upper, uh, all caps. So it's, no. is it vice versa? Vice versa. They're going to give the, the, yep, they're going to give the baby the upper and lower caps, which he deserves, but they're going to take that birth certificate, which is on the state level, and they're going to record it at the state level with your name on it. That's why you can go get it. Everybody cannot get the, you know, your birth certificate. They're not allowed to get it unless uh, it's your parents and they got to prove that they're your parents and that type of thing. Because anybody gets your birth certificate, they can open up a, a what's your name, uh, uh, a um, passport or whatever they want, and they can go around the world and do all kind of devilment with your stuff. So everybody can't get their own passport. Wouldn't one of them be the county? It's the state. The state, because you get it, county or the federal don't have it. The federal confirms the state, because the federal is using it from the state. You don't get the birth certificate from the federal. You get the birth certificate from the state, Secretary of State, and then you go to the county and get the second one. You don't go to the federal. You only send the second one to the federal to authenticate it from the state. You get a higher authentication because the state is locked into United States. The state is in America, and United States is in Washington, D.C., or District of Columbia. And they have been using your birth certificate from the state to do all this bombing and killing all over the world in your name. So when you get it authenticated, you want to release it from the feds and the state. That's very important. But more important is any document that has been the, uh, 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 recorded has your name on it only. Unless you get a marriage license and get it recorded, then you got the lady and the man. And the state is the creditor because the state takes credit for it. They, their name is not on it because there's no such thing as the state because it's a, it's a corporation. But since you don't know any better, they can, and I say, if you authenticate your birth, your marriage license, the state cannot come in and take your children because you have kicked the state out of your life if you authenticate. You got to. Just like you kick, kick the state and the government, out of, the government out of your life when you authenticate your birth certificate. You let them know you are no longer a 14th Amendment citizen. And you were here before Michigan, so especially the word of the state, so I assume it stands to reason that you should have that birth, uh, marriage license authenticated also. Authentication is the key or the beginning of freedom. You got to authenticate. Now, why do you authenticate? You have to authenticate because you have to prove that you are alive. I talked about that with the Cisco account. You have to prove that you're alive. When you purchase a house and stay in it, normally the warranty deed that you that was the original transaction, the warranty deed, had your name on it 
and the seller's name on it. The seller signed it, that they sold it to you. You never signed it. But your name is on the document, which means the document is yours. But it's not yours because you didn't complete the recording. That's how they could come and do this default. They could come and do the foreclosure. They could come and do the power sale. All the things. Take the house from you. Make you make payment. All the things they do to you is because you never transferred the title of the home to you. Now, to get it authenticated is the beginning. That's the first step. But now you got a small problem because on the birth, on the on the warranty deed, if you've been in the house, let's say you've been in there five, ten, fifteen years, any one of them, nine times out of ten. The notary, who is the action of proceedings, the notary is a judge, is a court uh, official. The notary is. That's why you've got to get it notarized. And that takes care of what they call action and proceedings. However, if the, if the warranty deed Notary has expired. I don't know what the lifeline on, on there. When, when you become a notary, you only can become a notary for a period of time. Let's just say for this conversation, five years. So the notary signs your warranty deed that you have made the transaction. You were alive. The notary, the notary was alive because she saw you making the purchase. Purchase. She was a witness because she had to sign it when you were there, which means that you have now created court action that you are alive. However, you got to get it recorded. So how do you do that? You have to do it with an affidavit. You do it with an affidavit, and you, you put on the affidavit everything that's on the warranty deed, such as the description of the property, the name of the persons you bought it from, the the uh, the date that you bought it. Uh, what else is what else is on there? I can think of. All of that goes in, and you uh, swear under the penalty of perjury, or you can go with uh, you know the way you want to do it, and you sign it in front of a live notary. Now I don't mean body live. I mean a notary that has license that has not has not expired, which declares to the court, because she is action, that you are alive. So now you just come from the dead. But since you didn't know that, you live in the house for 30 years, now you got to make the problem, because once you pull out that warranty deed, first thing you're going to look at an expiration, I guarantee you that that damn expiration is over with. So now you panic. How can I do this? And you do it exactly like I just said. You make out a, an affidavit, and you you swear that the affidavit is a true copy of the warranty deed. Put all the information you see up there in the corner of the right where they where they recorded it. Put that information into the affidavit, and you are swearing that you are the person who's there because the notary is going to look at your name, the name on the affidavit, and the name on the daggum uh, warranty deed is all the same person. Damn, you just got lied. <laughs> look like we got a caller. I done woke up somebody else. Let's see what <laughs> Let's see where this caller coming from. Area code 202-1777. You have a comment or question for this wild man from Borneo. Oh, peace, brother Ron. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I had um actually had to cut off my phone and then get back on the show. But I wanted to ask about the afterbirth. If we have a new grandchild and the afterbirth was taken home, 
So what are they making the birth certificate off of if the afterbirth wasn't left at the hospital? Woo! <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And I would believe that they went on and did the transaction because you're going to have to come back and and make a case. Now, you don't make a case on the afterbirth because, no, you know, that's, that's a process. You got to make a case by by uh, uh, your birth certificate, and once you once you perfect your birth certificate for the child, then all of that's minute. That's moot anyway. Moot, whatever they call it. It, it, it don't exist anyway. But but what they get away with is they they say that that afterbirth is what they use in order to declare the legalese or the legal process of creating that straw man and all that uh, assist you account and all those things. Okay. And thank you now, for going over the, um, that was the first I've heard about the warranty deed and creating the, uh, I'm going to share that with my mother as far as her house. Yes. 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 And um, yes. the marriage license, you said to go ahead and authenticate that as well all the way up. So, and you got that, work to do. Yes, you do. And and what makes you now remember this, what makes you alive is the notary. Because the notary will determine that you were alive and signed out those affidavits. Okay. You follow me? So if if, yeah. if the house your mother lives in is is uh, uh if 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 she been in there Let's say she read, no, because see, you know something that just dawned on me. If you buy the house 40 years ago and you refile it three times, you don't get a new warranty deed. You don't get a new warranty deed. You stay with the same one that you had. That's what, what it makes the title. Uh, uh, you don't break the title. You don't get a new okay. warranty deed. So I am sure that uh, your mother's uh, uh, expiration date on her notary has expired. So in order for her to do the the, the good stuff, she got to use a, a, a affidavit. You probably can put an affidavit or call, write me or call me or hit my email, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll send you a copy of a uh, affidavit example, and you can just fix it and use it. Okay. Can you give me your email address again, and also for any other listeners who may need it. Right on. Ron March Show, one word, S-H-O-W, at yahoo.com. Gotcha. All righty. Where are you calling Thank from? You, what, is this, what, is this, what is this 202? Where, where are you um, calling from? I'm calling from Virginia, but the 202 Virginia. is a D.C. area code. Okay. okay. All right. I just have seen that. I just wondered. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Peace. Peace, sister. Peace. Yep. All right. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So, if anyone else out there got any questions, uh, you know, now's the time for you to, you know, uh, you know, you can call in. I'll do what I can do, as they say. Try to get it to go, get it to go. All right. So let's get back. That authentication is one of one of the uh, most important processes of your freedom, and it's, it's got to be complete. Okay. Now, I want to go with. Uh, let me see what I got here. I want to go. With, I think it's a lad. Me, give me a second here. They're recording. Nope, that ain't it. Okay. Now listen to me. When you, when when they label authentication, see, I'm trying to find out where they, when they labeled it. It says 
When people delegate power between the federal and state governments, the so-called police powers were, de were delegated to the state governments to be exercised exclusively within their physical boundaries. Okay, I, I, I'm, I am seriously beyond that, but I want to I want to give you information on how they hide. And it, it comes under co a collateral, and I'm looking at it right here. Okay, hold on a minute. Probably authenticated copies. Okay. All right. Now, UCC 9, Section 311, perfection of security interest in property subject to certain statutes, regulations, and treaties. You can go to your UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, UCC, Article 9, Section 311. And when they say perfection of secured interest, now, listen carefully. When you go before the courts on any type of so-called, quote-unquote, debt, and they're trying to take something from you, such as money because of credit cards, your house, or your car. The, the, the old argument was, which is a good one, but they, don't, they, they know how to get around it. Show me the contract. If your birth certificate is not a contract, nothing in your life can become a contract other than personal stuff like a lease, there's two signatures on a lease, marriage license, two signatures there. There's about two or three more that are true contracts. But I'm talking about debt, okay? Now, and when I say debt, I'm talking about credit, when you have to create credit. Okay, now, when you go before the courts and they're trying to take something from you, the judge knows what I know 10 times more. So the first thing he's going to hold back on is the, the secured interest of the, uh, of the uh, object or project, which would be the house, the car, the refrigerator, whatever they're trying to get from you. There was a, an agreement signed, or there was a so-called, quote-unquote, contract assigned. But I'm telling you now, there was not a contract. It could have been a, an agreement, okay? But the judge is going to use that as a secured interest because he knows that you don't know to create the title of your, 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 your item. And let's just call the item a house. We're talking about a house. He knows right now that none of you know that the recording of the, of the mortgage was incomplete because no one signed. The title is still out there. And since no one signed, the courts or the crooks say that the person is dead. That's what this is all about. Declare the person dead because you've been living in the house five, ten, fifteen years, and you you pay it off. When you pay it off, you don't know to go down and perfect the signature except the title. You don't know how to do it. You were never taught how to do it. You dig it? So you need to right now. You need to authenticate your warranty deed. And then when you authenticate it, you want to take it back to the county and have it recorded, complete. That will complete the recording because now you're putting it on record, and I just had it up. I didn't get a chance to finish reading it. Let me try to find it right back real quick. Probably I can't do it real quick because I'm too. Let me get it up real quick. One more time. One more once. Okay, it's sometimes questions arise as when the act of recording is complete. 
as in the following case, a deed of real estate was acknowledged before the register of deed. They took it down and, and they and handed it to them to be recorded. And at that same incident, a creditor of the grantor attached the real estate. So they gave it the real estate with that mortgage. That would be the mortgage. One of them is the real, I don't know. It's got to be the, the warranty deed would be the real estate. And they took that bag of mortgage down and attach it to the real estate, which would be the, the warranty deed. And you have in the mortgage all the language because you already declared yourself dead because you took out a mortgage. And then it says you got the power of sale and all that gobbledygook. That's that's no good. But they're talking to a borrower, not a natural person. But you don't know the difference between the two. All right? In this case, it was held the act of recording was incomplete without a certificate of the acknowledgement. And wanting that, the attaching creditor had the preference. Now, what was his preference? He all conveyances and deeds which may be de facto recorded are not to be considered as giving notice in order to have this affect the instrument must the instrument must be such as are authorized to be recorded and the register must have been made registry must have been made in compliance with the law otherwise the registry is to be treated as nullity, and it will not affect the, sub the subsequent purchaser or incumbencer unless he has such actual notice within the amount to a amount would amount to a fraud. Okay, what he's saying is when they go down and take your house and they're using the mortgage as one instrument, and, you know, the mortgage said when you don't pay, they can do this and do that. That starts the process of eviction, later for foreclosure, because they got to get to it. Now, if you know what you're doing, everything they have done is fraud, but you got to know how to amount the notice up to fraud, would be amount to fraud. And that is, you have to perfect the recording. So what I'm saying is you need to do a affidavit on your warranty deed as soon as possible. Take the warranty deed and get it authenticated and take the total package to the register of deeds of the county in which your property is and have it recorded. Now they can never evict you because you have the title, you own the title of ownership or the certificate of title. That's what I'm getting at. Because you have come alive and you did it through action and proceedings. You follow me? Awesome. You do it under action and proceedings simple. It's real simple. Now, you know they're going to fight you and bite you and try and get you not to do it. You dig? Um, I'm doing, I'm still studying this information. It all makes total sense to me because I've been dealing with it and we just didn't have the uh, total information as to how to deal with it. However, if we're going to talk about, um, if we're going to talk about secured interest, which I, I was I was looking at, and I'm going back to it. If we're going to talk about that, there we go. Then we need to know how they create secured interest. Now the judge is going to say he knows what I know, so he's going to say, and he knows more. Don't get me wrong, I ain't no judge, but he's going to ask questions. Are you living in the house? Yes. Have you made payments on the house? Yes. Okay. Then you have established that there is collateral. 
but you're in possession of the collateral and the person trying to take your house, which is always a third-party debt collector, in the fraudulent name of, which is against the law, they cannot come to court and try and do something in the name of someone else. That's uh, in the in your amendments, and I'm looking at it. I can't call it, but it's in the eleventh. I mean the yes, eleventh amendment. They cannot come in there and and um, and do it in the name of somebody else, but you don't know it. So the judge is going to say, "Well, they have secured interest in your home." Okay, that's what that's all that judge is going to say. They have secured interest in your home. So since you haven't paid for it, they have a right from the mortgage. Going back to all the gobbledygook. That's going to make you stand there and look stupid because you don't have an answer. You say the name of of um, all fairness. You're in the house. You haven't paid for the house. So we're going to rule in favor of the mortgage company. Now, the mortgage company ain't even there. So what he should have said, he's ruling in favor of them crook-ass attorneys. But he's an attorney himself, so he's got to protect them as long as you stay dumb. He's going to protect the attorney. I wonder if you understand that. Now, they get away with that because what they do, and I was looking to, looking for it. I got it here to tell you about it. They will lock up your interest. And I got it somewhere. I may have to read it from my notes. Okay. All right, I can read this. You may not get to it. But this is what hypothecation is. The term hypothecation, as stated in Section 14A of the Federal Reserve Act, Federal Reserve Act, for the purpose of for enacting the Federal Reserve Act, one of the purposes was to authorize hypothecation of obligations, of the debt. You're going to float the debt, including United States bonds or other securities which Federal Reserve Banks are authorized to hold under Section 14A, okay, 12 U.S.C. Now, the term hypothecation, as stated in Section 14A of the Act, is defined as banking, the offering, the offer of stock, bonds, or other assets, your home would be another asset, owned by a party other than the borrower as collateral for a loan. Okay? So what they're talking about is when you buy a house, they lead you to believe they're going to use the house as collateral for the loan. Now, first of all, they can't hold the house because they don't have certificate title to the house. Secondly, there is no loan because there's no money. You got to know this. Some people say, Ron, you say the same thing all the time. Well, you don't get it. Because argument is the victor of the courts. You got to know how to argue, and you got to have substance when you argue. And they have enough knowledge of the facts to true up. A judge asked me one time, she said, she asked me, she said, uh, Mr. Marsh, do you think you can use a credit card anytime you want and don't pay for it? And I, I hesitated because it took me off guard. And then I just bit my tongue and, 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 and gritted my teeth. I said, yeah. She said, well, I want you to teach me how to do that. Now, I should have ripped her, because I ain't here to teach you how to do that. But I didn't know. I was scared to say yes. I didn't know what else to say, but I knew she had me She had me trapped. But that was in the younger days. I, she do it now. She got a problem. But she was trying to protect the attorney, because the attorney is all, most of them are ignorant when it comes to arguments. They know procedure. They don't know arguments. The black guys on the corner, they may know how to do that type of argument. But the white lawyers, they're not good at it. Not as you should be. Anyway, 
offering stock, bonds, and other assets, your home, owned by a party, which would be the grantor, owned by a party, other than the borrower, as collateral for a loan. So, what are we really talking about? We're talking about the house without transferring the title. So they don't have to transfer the title to create secured interest. But when you destroy the information on the secured interest, it knocks them out of the box. It knocks this whole process out of the box. If the borrower turns the property over to the lender who holds it for safekeeping, the action is referred to as a pledge. Now, that's what you do with the mortgage. When you sign the mortgage, that's a dead man's pledge. If the borrower retains possession but gives the lender the right to sell, power of sale, the property in the event of default, it is a true hypothecation. Now, the entire word of hypothecation is no friend of yours because they are describing that I'll call it an illegal transaction, but it's only illegal if you don't know what they're doing. You got that? We got some callers out here. Let me check these callers out. We're getting late in the in it. Okay, caller six zero one five zero. No, no six zero one six seven six two. You have a comment for, for, uh, for yeah, me? I was just saying. Say thank you, brother. Run, oh, man. You always be a good experience. You know, I had a to you earlier, and I just enjoyed the show, brother. Keep on enlightening me, man. Okay, I appreciate you calling in, brother. Yeah, All right, a guy from Jackson, Mississippi. I had talked to you earlier. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're catching on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope you got my taste, man. I had to lay out for myself, man. I said I understand where he was coming from, man. <laughs> you must have got it in the day. Do you take care of business? Yeah, I take care. I got it rolled up in everything now. Uh, but I had I had one question on it because um and and it, and, it, and it made me better. I'm glad I asked the question because you know on the form you had you rolled up the affidavit on your uh website, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, but the code you had at the end of the thing was like four four zero. Point thirteen oh eight or something like that. Okay, yep, so I yep. just that, I looked that up to see what that meant. Uh, so I understood that that was the Michigan code to reserve your rights. I guess right, and that's what. Oh, I you getting smart now? You got it. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. So what I did, I, okay. So what I did, I was like, huh? Let me. I'm a. I'm a highlight that Google it, but I'm gonna put Mississippi instead of Michigan. And I came on with the right thing, so I used the Mississippi code for this. All right, you did right. And I'm like, right. oh, okay, that's what Brother Rub be reading. He's like, you got to do it yourself, son. Like, ah, he wasn't really being man. He was just like, this, you want it to work, brother. Do it yourself. That's, do the work yourself. That, there you go. There you go. Now you can't hey, come on. All right. Then, I had to tell you this, sir. All right. All right. All right. Take care, please. Now, now when you now when you get on my website and see that donation box, don't try to skip over it like you don't see it. Just tap it okay. a little bit and put, put something in there. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. Appreciate you. All right. Great. All right. We got another caller here. Uh three one four zero four four zero of the Sierra. How you doing, hey, brother? Hey. All right, all right. Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, add to to what you were saying, uh, giving clarity on uh, uh, of the birth, after birth, and all that. I, yeah. I, I will help you. I will. I will use a word like representative or representative. Representative. You know all right. Yeah, that's your representative because when you deal with anything or anyone outside of you, you have a representation first. You don't give no oh, one man. your privacy. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I, I stand so the key word, That's a good correction. Yeah. So you have a representer and you have a present. The present represents the private point of yourself, the real, the present, what you, the now, the real live, the live person. 
Yes. And, that's a and I will say sum it up due to the contract. I would suggest people look up this simple word called acquisition and look it up on the free dictionary.com and read all what it follows up on acquisition. It will give you all the uh, connections to the code of how they acquired the land. You know, because I know we say all the time it's our land, we're moors, or we're indigenous, or talk on all that. But yep. based on reality, there is a acquisition. So in order for us to get it back, we have to acquire it back. And they it basically explains to you how you acquire it. Make, yep. make many acquisitions yes. in multiple definitions that deals with well, actual laws and codes. Aren't you doing the same thing? Aren't you doing the same thing? Coming alive and declaring your property to, to get back? Isn't that acquisition? Just that's like the correct, correct, yes. correct. That's an acquisition. Right on. Right correct. on. Because okay. they have another word, one more word, it's called annexation, which it means the formal act of annexation. This is what they do. This is what it means. The formal act of acquiring something, especially a territory by conquest or occupation. You understand? Wow. And, yep. So they do that's what, they do. Go ahead. When they cross the uh, Appalachian Mountains, when they cross the uh, a, a proclamation line, they begin to annex America. That's what all the right. gold rush and all of that stuff was about, was to take it with guns and any way you wanted to. And uh, that's how they took America. They exactly. Correct? Exactly. And so when they put down a flag, that's the representer. Representer. You understand? Wow. The flag represents the United States. Or like the eagle represents the United States. And I know I don't want to hold you up too long, but let me throw a couple of other words for people to understand how important acquisition is. Okay. It's, it's called incurring, making money, port barrowing, barrowing, Purchase, acceptance, taking over succession, laying claims. I can go on and on and on. Yes. Well, that, that comes from Crook. Sounds like that's what Robert would do. Because exactly. you're taking it. See, you're exactly. taking it. It was never given to you. You never had title to it. See, that's what they say when they say United States. Uh, they cannot own anything over here because they can't have the title to it. But they hide the title from us and call it a hyper, uh, uh, hypothecation, and they make it a legal process as long as you don't know what they're doing. Correct. Once you figure out what they're doing, then it 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 it, it goes away. Because there's no way for them. There's uh, my point is there's no way for them to hold property if they don't have title to the property. Hypothecation gives them the right to float. Uh, phony stuff like bonds, stocks, assets, and when you say assets, you're talking about the home because you never went and and perfected the recording of the home in the register of deeds, so it becomes a a uh, asset. You dig, and uh, so they can they can take advantage of you, but if you start, you know, oh, what can I say? Exposing what they're doing is like uh, rats when you—I mean, uh, roaches when you turn the light on. They run for cover, so it goes away. This hypothecation go away once you accept the title, and we don't know how to do it. And I'm—I'm I'm trying to give some some information on how to move on that. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, 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 and to sum it up, and to sum it up. Uh, we just need to, you know, all of us, we, we have to master this paperwork. And this yes. is the only thing we have not really touched on in the last hundred years. We have not touched on this paperwork. If you look at yep. all our great people, they have not studied the depth of the paperwork. Yep. And they did everything through the paperwork, creating all this language and all this treachery is done through paperwork. You're right. And denial of us knowing what it is. So they they say they're not breaking the law because you haven't ever presented a case 
that uh, they're breaking the law because you don't know what they're doing. How can you say they're breaking the law? Am I right? Correct. Correct. All right. Correct. Uh, all right, brother. I appreciate right. your call. All right. You, all right. All right. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought I had something else up here, but I guess I don't. Nope. But I'm still looking for, uh, and I put it and I did it. Can't find it. I'm still looking for, um, um, it was on my website. Perfection. Oh, I know where it is. There we go. I know where it is. Okay. I want to talk about UDC 9, Article 9. And Article 9 deals with the perfection of secured interest in property subject to certain statutes and regulations, except for otherwise provided in subsection D, the following of a financing statement, financing statement or a lien is not necessary or effective to perfect a security interest in property subject to a statute or any statute, regulation, or treaty of the United States whose, re- whose requirements are a secured interest obtaining priority over the rights of a lien creditor, a lien creditor, with respect to the property preempt section nine. Here's what I'm here's what I'm getting at. Uh, a statute or another jurisdiction which provides for the secured interest to be indicated on the certificate of title as a condition or result of the secured interest obtaining priority over the rights of a lien creditor with respect to the property. Okay, they're really now they're going to look at 1733. Uh, 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 this Article 9 explains the collateral or what they call secured interest. And it's nothing more than locking up the birth certificate, physically locking it up, or the title to the car, or any object you have that is being held or you think is being held as collateral. They have laws on how to perfect the collateral, and there has to be a certain way of doing it. They don't do it that way because you don't know. The judge is on the lawyer's side and just asks uh, several questions, and one of them is, are you are you driving the car? Have you driven the car? Yes. Have you made payments on the car? Yes. That means that you have in your possession the vehicle, but you don't have in possession the title of the vehicle because it's hidden in the register of deeds or somewhere else, not necessarily register of deeds. They take that ink signature agreement and you never see it again. You got to remember that. They cannot produce the the, 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 uh, the agreement. They cannot produce the contract or the not contract. It's a, it's a, it's a security because they say all promissory notes change after nine months into a security. So they have to hang on to it so they can deposit it in the bank and make money off of it. And that's known as a secured interest, that process. So you don't know it. They don't tell you. The judge plays along with the attorney as long as you don't know what the attorney is doing. That's why it's important to know you're not going to win in court unless your argument is airtight, airproof, airtight argument. That's why I repeat stuff over and over. And I try and broaden it enough where you go and look it up. And then a link will soon come on to let you know that, damn, like that brother called. He said, damn, that's what Ron is talking about. You got to go out on your own and get information. I can't answer everyone's question because I can't put your soul and your spirit in my answer to be for you. Does that make sense? Well, it better, because if you don't learn that to be true, you're going to be in trouble, because they know what they're doing. They go to college to learn how to screw and tattoo you. 
and they don't call it screwing and tattooing. They just say that you didn't know any better, or they just say that uh, they, they're doing, making a good deal, or they smart, and you are the loser. So you got to get your head on right. You got to get involved, okay? Now, they got this article, uh, Title 28, USC, subsection 1733. All of this is on my website, Government Records and Papers. Properly, listen to this, properly authenticated copies or transcripts of any books, records, papers, or documents of any department or agency of the United States shall be admitted in evidence equally with the original thereof. Do y'all hear me? So once you authenticate any document, you don't have to worry now about where is the, where, uh, the show me the note. You can take the note that you have with no signature on it other than your, you or your spouse. Use an affidavit. Put in the affidavit an authenticated copy of my promissory note. The only name on there is you and your wife. And you're going to put in the affidavit and get it notarized. Everything that's in the, everything you want to be in, because you know you got different sections in your in your uh, promissory note. You're going to put all of that into the affidavit. And you're going to say, uh, you're going to swear to uphold uh, 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 everything you're saying is true. That's what I'm trying to say. You got it? Then you're going to get it notarized. Now, you can put in the affidavit, this is part, put in the affidavit that this promissory note was attached to my prop, my home property. You need to put that up near the top and put the property description in to show that that promissory note is related to the property description because the register of deeds can only accept or supposedly only, only to accept any document that has uh, real estate in it. So you want to put real estate in there, and to put real estate in, you you need to put land, land description, and then go get it recorded. My goodness! Once you get it recorded, I mean, go get it notarized, and then you go down to the register of deeds and 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 put it in the register of deeds. Now you have defunct. Now, according to some heavyweights. And I'm not heavyweight, but they said, tell me, once you do that, somebody owes you that money. I'm going to try and get that brother on to talk about nothing but the 1099s OID, because I don't know. You know, I don't know everything, but I can listen and learn. And that's what I'm going to do with this brother. If I can get him to come on and just talk about it, 1090 OID. And why is it so important? And how can we get back into the swing of finances by using the 1090 OID? Y'all got that? I'm telling you, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a good night. Yep. Uh, you need to uh, understand where we're coming from because it's important that you get your head on right because the way things are going, it's getting worse and worse. And I've noticed in my years, every time blacks start moving forward, they always come up with some type of idea to hold you back. So all I can tell you is get get busy and get busy fast. All right? All right, until next week. Oh.